Gaming Bolt presents 14 longest video game boss fights that take hours on your first playthrough. There are some bosses we look back on and scoff at how long they really took to beat, mostly because of their inflated HP. However, there are others that can be pretty tough and take a while, especially if you don't know what to do. Then there are those that possess enough talking material to keep the fight going and going. Let's look at the 14 long boss fights that could potentially take hours on your first playthrough. The End Metal Gear Solid 3 By now, you've probably heard the legends about The End, an exceptional sniper that can take you down from anywhere, anytime, and once you get put to sleep, have fun making it back to the fight. Your only real chance is to kill him on the docks early in the game. Of course, there's also the move your PS2's clock a week ahead and watch him die of old age trick, but there's no denying that anyone unaware of this trick will waste plenty of time trying to end the end. Valakus Lineage 2 Forget for an instant that you have to fight other guilds just for a chance to face Valakus, but the fight itself demands coordination for a long time. With 16,660,000 HP, you'll be beating down Valakus from anywhere between 4 to 6 hours. Remember, that's with very little mistakes whatsoever. Even a seasoned Lineage 2 player who faces Valakus for the first time will have quite the task at hand trying to beat Valakus. Long Gui, Final Fantasy 13. Remember the Adamantois from Final Fantasy XV? The Longui from Final Fantasy XIII is a similar creature, possessing tons of health and plenty of damage resistance. Even worse is the fact that Longui is not vulnerable to death, hence prolonging the fight even further. If you're fighting it for the first time and haven't adequately leveled up, prepare to, well, muddle about and hit it until it dies. Kael'thas Sunstrider, World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade Ever been talked to death by a boss and his goons? Kel'thas Sunstrider from World of Warcraft's Burning Crusade expansion pulled it off incredibly well. The raid instance, taking place in the Eye of the Tempest Keep, consists of numerous phases and that doesn't include fighting Kel'thas in Magister's Terrace. The problem is that he has multiple speeches throughout the encounter, one before the instance, another for each phase, and yet another on the Terrace. He may be easier now, but at launch, Kel'thas knew how to eat your time. Deathwing World of Warcraft Cataclysm The only thing you need to know about this fight is that there are tentacles to destroy. Lots and lots of them. For numerous phases. Oh, and completing those multiple phases is only the first battle. The second battle with Deathwing is all about a large tentacle, waves of enemies, huge rocks, executing all of this quickly enough to avoid wiping, then dealing with buff losses and repeating the same steps until he unleashes more goons. Just don't bother, okay? Penance, Final Fantasy X. Fancy a boss with 12 million HP? Well, that's Penance for you, Final Fantasy X's most powerful super boss who's released once all Dark Aeons have fallen. Not only can it absorb elemental damage and insta-kill your party with an attack called Judgment Day, but it also has a second form. Again, if you know what you're doing or happen to get lucky with Yojimbo casting Zenmato, then it's not terrible, but that just elevates this fight from unbearably long to bearably tedious. Army of Metal Gear Rays Hard Mode Metal Gear Solid 2 Fighting Metal Gear Rays can be fairly interesting when playing on the easiest difficulty in Metal Gear Solid 2. Not only do they each go down in a few hits, but there are only three of them. Now, crank that up to highest difficulty and each ray has lots of health. Playing this for the first time means avoiding missiles, shooting each ray, collecting ammo, and hoping your chaff grenades actually stun them. Collect the right wig that gives Raiden infinite ammo, and this becomes much quicker. Alma, Ninja Gaiden. In the original and black versions of Ninja Gaiden, Alma is the first greater fiend that players fight. So by the time you fight her, there was a basic understanding of the game's concepts. Then you die. A lot. Turns out at the time, Alma was the toughest boss in the game. Being so woefully underpowered so early on and having to go up against that brick wall, failing again and again? Bad times. Igrilith Zero, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Igrilith Zero is part of an online squad mission in Xenoblade Chronicles X and functions as sort of a global event among players. And make no mistake, bringing that health bar down isn't a problem. The problem is that it has millions of health bars with thousands and thousands regenerating between event cycles. So, even if the entire Xenoblade Chronicles X player base does significant damage, Igrilith Zero can negate a lot of it and keep chugging. Let it not be said that the game doesn't want you to settle in for the long haul. 
Mizar, Final Form, Jet Force Gemini. The big bad of Rare's Jet Force Gemini is no slouch in his final form. Even getting to him is tough, as you need to score all of the collectibles in the game. But whether it's the constant projectiles or electricity that just can't be predicted, Mizar will necessitate restarts if you don't have enough ammo or health. It's a fight where you need to be patient, but once again, there will be restarts if you're fighting him for the first time. Ancient Dragon, Dark Souls 2 The Ancient Dragon has the highest health pool of any boss in Dark Souls 2 and is probably the toughest one as well. This is a fight that will take a long time just because you'll keep dying to his one-hit kill attacks. Summoning help? Don't bother because they'll die instantly and bolster the dragon with more health. It's a crazy fight, one that requires you to anticipate his moves perfectly and react accordingly. Or just smash your controller and move on. Senator Armstrong, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance The fight with Armstrong is tough when Raiden loses his sword, meaning you have to whittle his health down to 90% and then intentionally take a hit. However, that means parrying his attacks, dodging the unblockables, and fighting back accordingly, which will probably lead to death more often than not, especially on Revengeance mode. Once you've got that part down, then the boss battle begins in earnest. Lorien, the Elder Prince, and Lothric, Younger Prince, Dark Souls 3. It's bad enough that Lorien teleports and possesses the ability to one-hit kill you. It's telegraphed, sure, but still powerful. Kill Lorien and Lothric will heal him back to half health, after which they fight together. It may sound simple enough to kill Lothric while Lorien is down, but the two of them become so vicious as a duo that it takes several tries to kill them. But hey, at least the final boss is easy, right? Bloodletting Beast, Bloodborne. One of the toughest bosses in the game, the Bloodletting Beast can be best killed if you don't lock on, targeting his hind legs and being patient. Of course, if you don't do the first two, it's a long series of deaths, resets, more deaths, and repeats. A lot of that has to do with the beast's powerful attacks and range, but if you're unlucky enough to fight the headless version, then that means dealing with a ton of poison as well. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.